Newburgh is a really potent place. Um, we have a really great diversity of people. We have a great historic um, value. Um, Washington's headquarters is here. Um, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz performed on the Ritz Theater for the first time. JFK walked down Broadway, uh, our widest street. And uh, it's rich just with so much um, just so much value in terms of the art and architecture, um, but it also is one of the, the most distressed urban areas in the United States. There's an incredible amount of need. Newburgh is about, has about 28,000 um, people in it and over 1,800 people um, qualify for a Habitat home. We're running out of land. There's, we're not gonna have infinite amount of land that we can build on and we have to maintain a certain amount of open spaces to make the quality of life decent and also just it's a shame to see all these buildings decaying and falling down and nothing is happening to them. Abandoned, blighted, just unbelievable conditions and yet you can also see um, the historical presence that, that is there and the what this vibrancy of what this city used to be and knowing that there is that need this is an opportunity with our work to really um, revitalize neighborhoods um, not just homes and so there's really this um, kind of potent combination um, with a lot of potential for a great city for it to kind of be restored to an all-american city again we're located in a historic district and that puts a requirement upon us to uh, re either rehab the house or if, if it's too far gone and we have to knock it down, build something that is going to be compatible with a historic district. Um, what I particularly try to do on each one of our projects that have to do with um, rehab is I look at the building itself. I look at the other buildings that surround it and um, look at, of course, historical color palettes, and I try to accentuate all the positives on the outside of that building as much as we possibly can before everybody thinks that rehabbing is this wonderful thing that we, anybody can do. They need to know the costs associated. Abatement um, of lead and asbestos is a pretty complex issue for uh, someone like us, who is a, a low-income home rehab or builder. We've had abatements as low as $20,000 and as high as $120,000. And that's been a real challenge for us, is justifying that this is a cost-effective method um, to, to employ. And um, how can we better manage those costs? We have to balance our, our growth. Um, the rehabs, uh, because of the environmental work are, are just tremendously expensive. We enjoy doing them, um, but we have, to, we have to balance it with, with some, some new build activity and some rehab activity. Uh, relative to new builds, we try to keep the buildings very, very simple. And again, accentuate the positives, really accentuate the trim work as much as we possibly can, use color to play it up quite a bit, um, but still trying to save money because that's what, you know, we're trying to build decent, affordable housing. <laughs> we couldn't do it without our volunteers. It's simple as that. Um, if you are trying to control the cost and keep the cost down, you have to do it in a way that you can bring the volunteers in and do it. It's a lot more difficult. That's one of the more difficult things with doing rehabs versus new construction of a one-story ranch house like a lot of affiliates do. The best place to start is with your building department. Start with a building department. Um, if you've already acquired a property or are looking to acquire a property, that would be where you would start. Talk to them about the ins and outs of uh, demolition, condemnation, what the laws are relative to that particular town or city. Um, find out, you know, do your homework. I would say a key committee would be site selection. You have to go in and really understand what your uh, going to take on in a particular building and, and what that is going to do to your construction budget. Picking the right site and saving the right building as opposed to the wrong building is a key lesson. It can be six months before we actually get in there to actually do some work on a house that we've acquired and I think that's kind of has to be planned for or else you're going to be sitting there with no houses to work on. I wish that we could go into a project and know exactly what it is that we're going to need to do and it'd be very easy then to plan for it and implement it. 
I think that's the biggest challenge is just not knowing until you get in there and you have to be prepared and you have to be very flexible in order to do the work that you're doing. Definitely, if this is your first time out there, don't go in and not deliver on what you've said that you've done. You won't be able to do the kind of work that you need to do in a historic district like we are without that relationship. Uh, my best advice to anyone is do your homework, be prepared, answer the questions before they're even asked. Even though it is a huge challenge, you just do it one home at a time and often where you can, you can be building four homes at a time and then seven homes at a time and then before you know it, you've begun to change not only a couple of homes on a street but an entire neighborhood and then you build another neighborhood and then another neighborhood and before you know it, you've transformed the entire community. Taking a building that is basically falling down around itself and uh, making it someone's home is an incredible feeling. We were doing a particularly um, old, really decrepit house a few years ago and the homeowner that had been assigned the house stood out front and said, my dream house. When we brought down the buildings uh, that had to come down on East Parmenter Street, actually, the police came by and stopped us and we said, oh no, no, we have all our permits in place, all our building permits are here, and they said, I know you do. We were just coming by to stop you and say thank you, because uh, we haven't been on the street even, even half as much as we'd been before these buildings were up. I, we've worked in houses where volunteers have literally said, my grandmother used to live here. I remember playing in that room. I'm glad that we can be back here fixing it back up and having some family be able to move into it. We have the opportunity not only to, to house by house change that equation and over a long period of time really help the city of Newburgh with the, the, a, a good stable population of homeowners, but the cherry on top of the sundae is we, we get to do some historic preservation along the way. You may not be able to save every aspect of a building, but you can save the true character, the, but what we call the bones of the building. We found an old window that we wanted to replace and it just looked like, like nothing, painted over glass. And as she scraped away and scraped away and scraped away, every uh, rectangle of that glass was a different color. And then we found some other pieces and, and replaced it. And it's just the beauty of the house and the, when the sun shone through on dedication day. It was just wonderful. We were all part of it. We brought it back to life.